Alright, what's going on ladies and gentlemen? My name is Tommy and I am joined here today with my man Sean. The rampage just went down and it was crazy, but an important part of that whole thing was building a rotor park and this was the man behind it. A lot of freestyle people out there are always looking for a place to fly. I know I'm one of those guys. I have to like drive 20, 30 minutes just to find anywhere decent. But you actually went out and built something that was just completely epic. So first question is, like to you, what, what is a rotor part to you? Being an ex-extreme sport junkie myself, I grew up on a BMX bike hanging out with my skateboarding friends. One very serious component was half pipes, quarter pipes, spines, skate parks. This is the second coming of a lifestyle sport. We need to have a concept where we take a skate park and we make it for drones. What we need to do is we need to take that idea and apply it to freestyle FPV. So I watched videos, I thought of things that I wanted to fly, and then I just took my construction background, put them all together, and started building these obstacles in my mind. Like what goes through your mind when you're thinking of an obstacle for somebody that's flying? Flying FPV, it's almost like you can you can almost turn anything into an obstacle. So what do you do that kind of takes that to the next level? What I do is I think about proximity and I think about tricks. Although we don't necessarily have a legitimate trick book with actual trick names and things like that, we still have tricks that the community uses. Power loops, things like that. You take those ideas and you build the obstacle according to the trip. Okay, I want something that I can power loop through, something I can blind power loop through. So I need a couple of gaps here. Then you think about, okay, I want something I can dive through. So now we're building vertical elements. So the concepts just come together and then we feed off of the videos in the freestyle community and we say, okay, that's a kick-ass thing that he's flying around. How we, can we build something that's like that, but isn't that so that basically anybody can have it. Something that I talk a lot about is the fact that we have country FPV and urban FPV. Yeah, okay. There's a yeah, lot of like that. there's a lot of urban FPV pilots. A lot of us country guys, we don't have those things, so we have to build it ourselves. At a certain point, you know, one thing you're always going after is like, all right, let me nail this chick. Let me nail this gap. And then once you start getting comfortable with that, then it's starting to string certain tricks together and kind of find that line or even flow, if you will. Absolutely, that's rotor park design, which is exactly what people think about when they do skate park design. There are several very important companies around the world that focus just on building skate parks, building skateboard, uh, snowboard parks. And the biggest success of those parks is how they are put together. You have to understand what a line is. You have to understand, you have to think the way a pilot thinks. And that's what gives us the advantage because we are pilots. We know how we fly. We know how we want to string things together. And again, that is the concept of a rotor park. It's not just scattered objects and obstacles throughout a field. It's a cohesive concept where everything comes together. If you look at a skate park, it's planned out according to the runs. The placement of the obstacles is very important. And those were the things that I was thinking about as the volunteers were building all the obstacles, okay, if I was gonna fly these items, what sort of run would I wanna do? What sort of lines would I want? Obstacle placement is very crucial and very important because you wanna make sure that it gives you a fluid run. And with the obstacles that I designed, you have the ability to bring them down, move them to another location, send them back up so you can be fluid. If the line doesn't work, take it down, put it somewhere else, and keep moving the obstacles around until you find that perfect mesh. Right, so it's almost kind of like it's modular. Oh, absolutely. I wanted everything to be modular. I also wanted to hit an economical price point. I've always been poor man FPV. You've got to be able to build on a budget. So each one of the obstacles that I designed, I came at it with the concept that it can be built each obstacle for under $200 with very minimal tools. So literally anybody who has a drill, has a circular saw, they can hop out in the field, they can go to their local Home Depot, they can go to their local Lowe's, they can get a handful of plywood, they can get a handful of two by fours, some nuts, bolts, washers, screws, and take literally an hour and build one of these obstacles. Each one of those obstacles out there were built by an average of three guys. Each obstacle took about an hour to build. I've been wanting to ask this. I want you to describe each one and I want you to name it because you know, we gotta name certain things now, you know what I mean? Like when something becomes a staple, it, it becomes a name. For instance, like a Port charpoo pie. tree, right? <laughs> the a charpoo, charpoo tree. <laughs> exactly, exactly, right? So now I wanna hear what Sean calls your creations. Okay. 
the first obstacle that I designed was the TP. That was the yeah, three-legged tripod yes, with the dotted dates on. Okay, yes. That yes. that one I actually had a chance to test build at my house last week before the rampage. I had a hell of a lot of stress on me, but I wanted to make sure that it knocked it out of the park. We realized there was a couple of things that we needed to change on it, so fortunately we were able to change that when we built it here and it worked absolutely perfect. Number two was the scaffolding ladder. This was an idea that I saw on the job site where the guys were doing some siding and they built these scaffolding ladders out of two by fours and two by sixes to support their scaffold walk boards. Well, I said, hell, let's make it a little bit bigger. And I went ahead and put three by five panels on it so you had places to go through, gaps to hit, and you could dive through the top of it as well. Yes, I, that was like, for me, yes. For me, that Bam. was like, oh, oh, that's, that's gonna be a good one right there. Number three, let's look at the billboard. Everybody that's shooting videos, you see them doing bounces and bumps off of billboards. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, let's find an easy way to build a billboard. 16 feet tall, about 20 feet wide. We had a blank canvas, so I said, well, hell, let's go ahead and just cut Riot in it. So as the guys were building it, I had them go ahead, stencil out Riot, cut the openings in it. So now you have a billboard that you can do bumps off of, stalls off of, as well as shoot through those gaps, do more power loops. Next item, the Plinko dive. I wanted people to have a dive gate that had some, some height to it. So 28 feet tall, four by four, a series of squares coming down so that you could dive through that, pop out, you could do pop-ups through it, just go crazy with it. The number of lines and combinations that you can do is almost infinite. I got one more question for you. Yes. All right, so you, you earlier we touched upon, you know, the analogy or even the example of parallel of skateboards, and it took years and years before skate parks emerged. Where do you think that is going to happen and how prevalent do you think it will be? As history goes on, things move faster and faster. We look at skateboarding. Skateboarding has been considered, when it first came about, it was a fad. But now it's a fad that's lasted for over 40 years. It has permanence. We are still an infant when it comes to being a lifestyle sport. We've only been around for about five years. So we still have a lot of growing to do. If we keep moving on the trajectory that we're moving now, in the next three to five years, I expect to see more rotor parks. That's when local municipalities will get on board and have an understanding. I've already talked with several local areas that are very open and very receptive oh, that's to these awesome. concepts. Awesome. What made skateboarding really successful not only was the X Games, but was the fact that local municipalities invested in skate parks and put skate parks up with taxpayer money. That's the future that I see for us in five to ten years, where we see people building rotor parks, specifically local communities investing in rotor parks for people to fly to do this. And that's the future that I see for us. But again, we need to be patient and understand that this is going to take time, and we just need to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. So that's super awesome to hear. So obviously we've got you know these governing bodies that are sprinkling down a little bit of regulation, and I think it's got a couple of people in the hobby a little concerned, but I'm going to say that whenever there's something positive, and this is something I've heard Capra say all the time, when there's something positive, that's something that you cannot just push back. Uh, and with that, we've started a FPV coalition, so if anybody out there who is passionate about the hobby wants to help protect the hobby or understand the laws a little bit better, FPV Freedom Coalition, thank you very much. All right, but that is it. Sean, I want to thank you so much for helping us throw down this super epic event. See you on the next one. Fly for one, fly for all. All right guys, thanks for coming by and checking out today's video. I just wanted to let you guys know that we're coming to Hesperia, California and X-Hover headquarters uh, to host a quad camp coming up December 1st and 2nd. You can get your tickets right now at quadcamp.com slash tickets. We're gonna be there with Umagad, oh Ladrib, Cricket FPV, Critwell FPV, Joshua Bardwell, the FPV know-it-all, and Jaboy Vortex. Make sure to get your tickets today. You can get those at quadcamp.com slash tickets. Link in the description below. Go ahead and click that link and sign up, and we're gonna see you guys there. We're gonna get some ripping on. We're gonna help you with your builds. Uh, it's gonna be a blast.